and welcome back to the Demis Helen channel. We're going to take a look at building a transpluck in Vital. We're going to keep it relatively simple, but we are going to use all three oscillators in there. And I'm going to show you a few tips that you can use the LFOs for and using a few effects to just set yourself aside from other sound designers. And especially if you're learning, these might be nice tips to add into your sound design. So less of me talking, let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is listen to how this pluck sounds. We're going to recreate this that was made in Vital. It's for an up and coming pack that I'm doing. So you know that I like to just share a free preset here and there. So if you want to follow along, please do just pause the video where needed to so you can copy the settings and you can have this preset for absolutely free. So we're going to start by turning all three oscillators on and I'm going to route all of them to filter one. We're going to increase all of them to six voices. And we're going to turn down the mix or the detune amount, the unison amount to five or somewhere near to that. So six or five will do. There we are. So that's going to leave us with this sound. And right there is the basis of our sound. So moving on, we're going to turn on filter one. And I'm going to switch this to an analog 24. So just the next in the list. I'm going to pull the resonance down and I'm going to close the filter entirely so all we can see is just this little curve here and we're not going to hear anything now. And this is going to be shaped by an LFO and I'm going to tell you why we're going to use an LFO instead of the envelope setting here. So I'm going to bring this across and I'm going to make this into like a plux, so something like this, turn smoothing off and I'm going to switch it to seconds. This way we can control how fast this decays based on the envelope trigger. So I'm going to change the motor envelope so it's acting exactly like one of these up here but we have a few more controls. Drag and drop LFO1 onto the filter, and I'm just gonna bring this down to halfway for now. Let's have a listen to its effects. Okay, so that's too fast. I've moved that to 0.1 of a second. So I'm gonna bring that down to 500 where it roughly starts. And I'm gonna bring up the mix now of this. And I'm gonna bring up about there and once you have that set up you're pretty much all the way there for the sound design we're just going to make a few adjustments to the pitch area here so the first one i'm going to increase by say three to six in the tune section just to set it off tune a little bit so they are set aside from the others hold shift and transpose one octave up that's plus 12 but I'm also going to bring that down, say, minus five-ish or six like that. And then finally, this one, I'm going to go for a minus six region as well. From here, we can jump into the effects and we can turn on delay and we're going to turn on reverb as well. So for now, let's move these to the top because they're the only two we're going to be using. And I'm going to set this to stereo. I'm going to set this to quarter notes and this one to eighth notes. So we've got a little bit of an offset between left and right ears. And I'm going to bring the spread down like this and then position it so we've got a bit of a roll off on the highs, but we've got a bit of a roll off on the lows. Have it a little bit more like that. So the highs are shaved off a little bit and dampened and the lows aren't really going anywhere in terms of getting involved with phasing issues and all that other sort of bad stuff. I'm going to leave feedback where it is, but I'm going to turn the mix down to about nine o'clock-ish. And that's just enough stopping it getting too involved and masking over really the notes that you're playing. It's just sort of accompanying. And then from there, we can turn on the reverb. So I'm going to bring in a low cut here on the actual reverb. So somewhere like 40 to 60, depending on the sound design you're doing, we're just going to chop it off like so. So you can set this wherever you want. You can set the cut off even higher if you want to, but we're going to leave it sort of that 40 to 50 range. I'm going to bring up the mix a little bit so we can hear what's going on. I'm going to bring up the time, let's just say to about four or five seconds for this particular design. I'm going to increase the size a smidge. I'm 
and then we're going to introduce some delay to stop the reverb hitting straight away on the note it's going to kind of come after the note a little bit just to keep the quality of the transient that we're aiming for in this pluck so from there i'm going to bring the mix down to a tasteful level Gonna roll out some of the lows a little bit more here. Okay, so there we are. We've got the basics of our pluck set up. We've got the effects and we've got the voicing and filters done. Now I'm gonna show you three different things that you can incorporate into your sound design, just little tidbits that you can use to change up the sound design. And you can use these in conjunction with macros so you can control what sort of sounds you want. So before we get started, we're gonna use LFO2 to control the unison blend or how much of that unison is coming through. LFO3 is gonna control the pitch or the fine tune of the oscillator. And you can see I've already set that to a sine wave. And the third one is going to be using the distortion here, I'm going to turn it off for now, but we're going to use the down sample. Starting with LFO2, I'm going to drag and drop this onto the unison blend or the amount mix. So if I put this up as extreme, you're going to hear what's happening here if I set this to 1 over 8. It's creating a little bit of chaos because it's periodically going up and down in a sync mode. So that means once I hold the key, it's just going to continue going round and round and round in a loop until I let go of the key. And that is controlling how much of that movement is happening. So if you make that a little bit less, It's doing very minimal, but it's adding a little bit of gritty texture to the sound. And obviously you can control this using a macro. So you could set this to full and then use the macro to blend in how much you want. So let's just put this on these two first ones here. Let's have a little bit more on this one. So you're going to hear that it sounds a little bit more wide. It's going to sound maybe less defined. That's probably another way to describe it. But if we use these macros, just drag them onto the top of the modulation. And now that's done, that means that these cannot operate until we turn macro one up or blend a certain amount of them in. So if I just keep hitting these, these two keys, hear a bit more of a detuned voice. Let's over exaggerate these a little bit. What it's doing is increasing the unison blend, so how much of those six unison voices are coming through, but we're applying modulation, so it's actually moving back and forth between its original position and another determined position that we've set here using the dials. So I'm gonna leave it as that, but we can use this as a bit of a blend. So I'm gonna say maybe 11 o'clock is gonna be a good area. And it adds a little bit of grit, but it is taking a little bit away of the clarity. We can introduce that clarity back by using another envelope. So I'm going to use envelope number two because envelope one is our master envelope. And I'm going to bring that down and attach that to our cutoff as well. And then I'll bring the level down. That's what it was like before. Just a little bit, just a smidge coming through. I'm going to bring LFO 1 down a bit now. Now, looking at LFO number 3, we can attach this to the fine tune. So I'm going to bring this across and attach it there. And I'm going to set it to about 5 o'clock. And I'm going to do this for all of them. Set them roughly to the same mark. I'm going to turn off the grit for now because this is doing a little bit of modulation on its own, but let's have a listen to how this affects it. You can see it's re-triggering every time, so I'm going to turn this onto sync mode so it's independent of the key presses. And there's not really much happening. You can hear something happening. I'm going to put the mod wheel on our filter so we can open it up temporarily. 
Now we can hear there's some pitch bending. And we can increase this. And that's how we get that nice wobbly effect on plucks, especially when the filter's closed, it sounds really effective. And we can obviously have this as intense as we want. So it gives us a bit more of a gritty texture again. I'm going to have this a little bit slower. More like there, maybe 200 milliseconds will do it better. But we can see we've got these set at a predetermined level. We can also attach macros to all of these. So then that requires macro two to control how much of these blend in. And then the final tip, we're gonna use macro four to control the amount of distortion. And I'm gonna use macro four to control the mix. So you can see that's gonna turn it onto full automatically. And we're gonna use the downsample and we're gonna use the drive control to control how much of that downsampling is actually happening. And you'll recognize this effect if you're not familiar with it. It's a really nice addition and obviously the macro is just controlling how much of the mix of that downsample is being blended. So we can have it just so we've got a smidge of that coming in. Simply rename that to bits so we know that is a downsampling bit crushing sort of effect. And there we are. Hopefully you have a brand new sound to save into your library if you've been following along. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. This will be coming out in a pack that will be out probably near the end of this month, which is going to be Vital Transplux as voted by everyone here on YouTube. If you have any questions about what you've seen in today's video, please let me know down in the comments. Also, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, it does help the channel progress and grow and reach more people. And it's all about teaching others to become better musicians as well. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.